Coming up next, Book and it continues their discussion on Sign of the Beaver. Haha, <laughs> I got it right that time. Hey everybody, and thanks for listening. I'm your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Cobbs. I'm joined today by two of our three panelists, Isaiah and Matthew. Howdy. Yo. For those of you who have listened to the show, you know there's a third panelist. His name is Tanner. Unfortunately, he's been very busy this week, and he could not hop on with us this week. How are we doing today, gentlemen? Pretty good. Doing great. I am super excited about this episode. Isaiah, though, how has your week been? Give me some details. It's been pretty good, mainly just been doing school and then uh, editing. That's about it. No video games at all? Well, okay, some video games, yeah. <laughs> okay, I was, I was making sure. Matthew, what about you? No, um, I've mostly been doing school and football practices. Had those a lot. You guys want to get into the book, or do you want to do some more banter? Let's get onto the book. We left off last week on before probably the best part of the book, when they kill a bear. Right, guys? Is that the best part of the book? Yeah, I think so. It's the most exciting part. Yes, probably. Anything else, Matthew? I mean, I think Elizabeth Spear thought so, too, because she put it on the cover. It's a bear on the cover of the sign. On the... Sorry, we'll get on. Is it? Do you think it's every man's dream to kill a bear? Not necessarily, like, fight a bear, but, like, just having the, like, realization, like, I just killed a bear. You think that's, like, a dream? I don't know that every man dreams about it, but I think after it had happened, I think everyone would have been pretty excited that they'd just done that yeah i kind of agree with matthew on that i mean i know i would totally want to kill a bear i really want to go hunting and all that but it just depends on the person i guess what would be what what would be you guys' number one weapon to kill a bear with oh that's a good question bow and arrow as he is like i'm gonna stay like 50 feet away and shoot in the head um <laughs> no you gotta go like a war hammer right you gotta smash its skull. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> I was gonna say lightsaber. But... Oh, that's oh, that's. I thought I thought we were talking about like modern weapons. No, ancient ones. I think a war hammer is a modern weapon. No, I mean like like actual world weapons, and not like some laser sword from a galaxy far, far away. So you're actually gonna carry a war hammer through a forest looking for a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why the bear would come after me. So it hear me. All right. Well. If I, if I have to pick a modern weapon, maybe I'd go with an Iron Man suit. Something you can actually get. I feel like you're defeating the purpose of your own question, but that's fine, too. And that that excludes an AK-47. Grenade launcher. My bare fist. <laughs> your, your bear. Oh, I was, in, so I was in Glacier, Montana, you know, and glaciers, they're big on bears. So there are so many funny t-shirts up there. Uh, one of them was... A deer met a bear, and he said, I'm going to kill you with my bare hands. And he had bear claws on his hands, and then the bear says, oh, dear. Anyway, there's another one where two bears came up on two humans in sleeping bags, and they were sleeping, and they high-fived and said, burritos. (laughs) 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 Anyway, yeah, Glacier, they actually have some pretty funny, cool t-shirts there. I recommend it. Glacier was awesome. We didn't see any bears, though, unfortunately. After reading this, did anybody did anybody else want to go eat some spicy bear meat at an Indian party? I thought that sounded pretty cool. Why or why? Not? I mean, I didn't I didn't think of that, but yeah, you just like you know what I'd really want right now? Some spicy bear meat at an Indian party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's not what came to mind. Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely did not think that. I mean, it would have been cool to go to the to the party, I guess. See, like what it was like at an Indian tribe dance party yeah Isaiah, what did you think about this part i mean that was pretty cool i mean now that i think about it i would totally have loved to go eat some bear meat yeah but when i read the book i i did not think of that at all yeah i mean i think one of the other books that i have read that they talk about bear meat is the chronicles of narnia i don't know they talk about eating bear meat anyway i've always wanted to try some bear meat but i'm pretty sure it's illegal to just kill a bear um, basically negating our whole conversation unless you're attacked by a bear. <laughs> Which happens in Glacier, Montana. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Um, but, yeah, I've always wanted to try some bear meat. But, yeah. unfortunately, I've never... I'd, I'd try some. All right, let's move on. So, after reading this book, I I may or may not have yelled squall work at my mom when she asked me to do my the dishes. <laughs> that was not a good decision. Do you think that this part is a bad influence on some bo- little boys? I don't think that almost anyone would have actually done what you did. 
Oh, uh, really? No, I'm, I'm... No. There's always... Like, think about it. None of us, after we read Harry Potter, wanted to go, like, research, like, dark magic or something, but, like, there's there's always an exception to the rule, so I'm sure there's somebody else besides me who did that, right? Please, somebody say <laughs> that they did that. Comment below. <laughs> Tell us about your squaw work experience. Yeah, if you're listening to this on YouTube, comment below. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always got to be some little kid. I was little, I was little when I first read this. I was maybe seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah, I think I read this in third grade. Yeah, no, I just read this for the first time like a month ago. I didn't really like it in third grade, though. I didn't really like reading back then. I didn't like reading till like, fourth or fifth grade. And it's the good age right there. But yeah. um, I think that, yeah, you can... I think reading it this time, it was almost like, yeah, this you shouldn't pay attention to that, but as a young kid, that can kind of go past you, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, everything's a man's work, not just all these menial chores. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So do you think that the... Like experience that Matt had in the Indian village, did it make him respect Atien more or less? I think more. I'm definitely not less. If anything, it didn't change. But because uh, like he saw uh, his family, I guess, and like got to see how they ate and how he fit in with everybody else. Yeah. And he was he wasn't like the awkward stone faced uh, guy that came to his cabin every day. He was like involved in like having fun with like, everybody whoa, else. And he was, this guy actually has a life. And the whole party was basically for him because he's the one who killed the bear. Yeah, so. what do you guys think about the part where he's like, I can't eat the bear because I killed it? What do you think about that? I was just confused. I was like, so you did something good and now you're not going to eat? Like, You're not going to eat what you worked so hard to kill? But and then I was like, I was like, you know what would have been funny? If Matt just puts down his ball and stands up and he's been like, I killed the bear too. <laughs> <laughs> no, that man wanted some food. <laughs> yeah, no, he wanted some food. I thought that was kind of interesting and cool, though. Did it bother anybody else though? They never got anything else to eat. No, no. You're just like, yeah, he's got he's got nourishment somehow. He probably just got food after the party. You, Cooper, you realize it's okay to like skip a meal every now and then. Like you're not gonna die. <laughs> well, my bad. Um, yeah. So when. Um, when Matt is talking with Etienne and they're talking about how Etienne's mom had been taken by the white people, or was it, no. She was killed. Um, do you think that, do you think that there was a reason for that to happen? Or was it just, just like a road rage kind of thing? I mean, how the book explained it it was they just came in and killed her and nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just got the sense that they were just doing it for no reason. Just because of, like, all the Indian white men hate stuff going on. Yeah, the... Like the French and Indian yeah. War that just wrapped up. You know what this reminded me of? It reminded me of probably the worst Star Wars movie, Attack of the Clones, when Anakin's mom gets taken by the Tusken Raiders. Sorry, I thought that was pretty. I thought it was pretty similar. Yeah. Anyway, so Matt says that during that conversation that during war, terrible things happen to happen on both sides. Do you think that that is true or false? Yeah, I definitely think that's true. And do why? Um, well, just because it's like a war. There's killing involved on yeah, both people, sides. People die on both sides. But I'm talking to, I think he's talking, I don't know, what I, when, I, when I thought about it, I was like behind like the full-on battle. Like in camps or like in jail or something like that. Or do you think, sorry, do you think that even the good side does some bad stuff besides defending their country? It just depends on what you define as bad. I mean, obviously, killing's bad, but if you have to do it to defend your country, then you just have to make the decision to do that or not. You know what this reminds me of? No. The second worst Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi, when Rose is like, we're not going to win by destroying what we hate, but by saving what we love. And I was like, rolling over in my seat with awkwardness and disgust. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was terrible. It was, like, the probably the worst Star Wars line in Dude. the history of Star Wars lines, which is not great in the first place. He was literally about to save the galaxy, and then she just stopped it. I was like, this is this is great. Yeah. This is how it should happen. And then you're like, no, that's not how it should happen. Isaiah, your thoughts on this? Besides, I'm cutting this. No, he's not cutting this. You you agree with you agree with us? It's terrible, yeah. Like their whole point of going to that planet was to get the Codemaster dude, and then in the end, she says she's happy because they saved some animals and didn't get the Codemaster to save the <laughs> galaxy or to save the rebellion. I know, it was so plotless. I mean, and 
The Last Jedi is, I don't know. Okay. Last week we talked about our school's classical conversation. So we were talking about like the anti charts and the decisions. So our class decision for this book, which we're doing for school, was that or it's a weather statement. So whether Matt should have gone to the Indian camp to get help for Atian's dog. And so this kind of next next question kind of leads into that. What have your been your reaction if you were Atian's grandma? when a young white boy comes and asks for help concerning a, you know, his what or good for nothing dog. What would have been your reaction? You are unwelcome. Why are you here? No, but like when he stated his intentions. Well, I'd probably be like, I don't understand you, so can someone translate this guy? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's like the Hobbit part one. He's hungry. <laughs> no, come on. Um <laughs> I'd probably tell him to go and send my granddaughter off with him. And um, give him some food before he left. Just like in the book? <laughs> yes. I don't know. I've never been an Indian grandma. N- Sorry, I can't relate to that. No, but, <laughs> like, what would you... Okay, I said, let's move on to you. What would you have done? Uh, I don't know. Probably just listen to him, like, to what he had to say. And then, I don't mm. know, I might have just said to leave it alone because it's a turtle tribe territory. And then it's against their like rules to do that. I don't I don't think he ever mentioned it was turtle territory though, did he? Yeah, he I think well he saw like the turtle sign and he's like time to turn back. Yeah, but he didn't mention it to the grandma. Yeah. No, I don't think he did. Then she's like, Oh, you're dishonest. Oh So, uh I think it's near the end of the book, Atian is talking about how before an Indian boy can become a man, he has to find his manitou, right? Yep. Do you guys you remember that part right very vividly? Where? Like at whenever the he's talking about he needs to find his like spirit or whatever. Oh yeah, and he has to go on the like the stay in the woods for a little bit. Yeah. Here, why don't we read that part from the book? Okay, I'm on page 107. If you guys want to follow along. Okay, every Indian boy must have a manitou. He said before he could take place as one of the men in his family, he had to find it for himself. No one could help him. His grandfather had been training him for many days. He had to learn many things. Now he must take the test. Or he would go out into the forest alone. First, he would make a special preparation, bathe himself carefully, and take a special medicine to make him clean inside and out. Then he would go far into the forest and build himself a wigwam of branches. He would stay there alone for many days, and he would not eat anything at all, even berries. After sundown, he would drink a little water from a brook. He would sing the songs that his grandfather had taught him, and repeat the ancient prayers of his people so that his heart would be worthy. If he did all this, and if he waited faithfully, one day his Manitou would come to him. Then he would go back to his village. He would have a new name. He would be a man and a hunter. What would it be like, this Manitou? Matt questioned. There was no way to know, Etienne told him. It could come in many ways. In a dream, he might see a bird or an animal or even a tree. He might not see anything at all. Instead, he might hear a voice speaking to him. There would be no mistake. When it came... A team would recognize that it was meant for him. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I don't know. Nico, were you guys disturbed at that at all? I mean, I knew it was just a story. And it would have been it would have been honestly weirder if Sphere had written it where the Indians didn't have that or like had something else just to make it, you know, less disturbing or whatever. Because it's she had to make it accurate. So I mean, I guess it's I wouldn't say I'm disturbed. It's just, it's not right, but it's like what what's in the book. So, but um, w- what was kind of annoying? I wish we would have found out because he he comes back like a few days later and he's like, I I found my manitou, and I wanted to know what it was, like what animal, like what his spear animal was or whatever. All right, if you were faced with Matt's decision to leave his family or to go hunt with the Indians, remember this is after like his transformative change of, you know what. I know it's a tough question, but what would you have done? Uh, and Matt, you are Matt, so oh, you have to answer that. I I think I'd stay. Well, I had already been there and learned so much in the area, like how to survive in the area with pretty much nothing if I needed to. And I had, you know, kept the cabin, finished building the cabin while my dad was gone, done all the chores, kept the cornfield, collected a bunch of food for them and like all that so i'd already done all the work so it'd kind of be a waste of work if you had just left 
But then think about it, you know, the, this. so he's been, the listeners, he's been keeping track of how long it takes. And his dad told him, I don't know, how do you say, like, seven, seven, seven weeks. Seven, so he's been, like, notching sticks to see how long it would take. And it's been very, it's been past the time that they're supposed to be there. Well, it was about four months longer than when his dad said he would come. I don't know. I think I'd also stay because, like, for one, if Matthew said you already knew the area, your surroundings, and how to hunt over there. But then also your dad told you to stay, and I'd rather listen to my dad and wait and trust him that he'd come back. Yeah. Oh, what is that? I don't think we've ever heard this before. Do you guys know what it is? It's the devil's advocacy alarm. So you know what the devil's advocacy alarm means? It means that one of us has to argue for the opposite side. Who wants to do it? You, you haven't answered yet. <sighs> I knew this was gonna should have answered the question myself. Okay. So, let me present my case to you, and then you can shoot it down at will. And then I will shoot my own case down at will. <laughs> Matt should go with the Indians for three reasons. Number one, his parents aren't coming back. Number two, his parents are probably not coming back. And number three, he's a man now. Let's go with the Indians. Reason number one, his parents are probably never gonna come back. So, his parents... His dad said, listen, it'll be seven or eight weeks, and he, Matt carefully kept count. And like Isaiah said earlier, it's been four months past that time. And, you know, as it, Matt's asked the question several times, are they ever coming back? Are they ever coming back? And really, he hasn't had any choice, but he has to stay. But then the Indians present him with this choice to leave with them and to go hunt in the north and to hunt moose. And he's faced with a terrible decision, but I think that he should go because... He, he just can't live out there by himself forever, even though he's done a good job. And there's just no point in him doing it if his parents are never coming back. So he has to go with the Indians. There's my case, boys. Shoot it down. Yes. But he also won't be alone because the Indians said they were leaving because more people were coming to build houses there. So even if his parents don't come back. But he's like a little, he's a little, he's a little kid, though. Dude, he's 13, has been living in the wild by himself for six months. I think he's good. I know, but all of the other parents are of the new homes, are, they're not going to be willing to take an extra mouth to feed, so he has to go with the Indians. He can feed himself. He can fish. He can feed himself. He can hunt, fish. He can, the go- corn. But, like, you can't have, you just can't live without his family. And plus, the Indians are offering a chance for a lifetime. Yes, but his dad yeah, also lifetime. told him he'd come back. Or Yeah, his dad told him that he'd be back, so he has to trust his dad. He, so he said he'd be back in seven or eight weeks, and it's been far past that. Yes. Even, like, if he stays, he wouldn't be alone, like I just said earlier, about that other settlers are coming. And he can ask them if they've heard of his dad or to help him find his dad, like to take him back to where he used to live. Yeah, but by the time he's learned that they're already that they're dead or something like that, then it means that, you know what? He missed his chance with the Indians, so now he has to beg for He knows food how and to stuff hunt like and that. make traps. He lived by himself and learned from the Indians for six months. Yes, but it'd be so much easier and so much more fun if he lived with the Indians. He even have a brother. What? Yeah, oh. He'd to be his brother, you know? He also has his dog <laughs> to keep him company. No, but that, remember, it, it wouldn't be his dog if he left with them, but it wouldn't. they wouldn't have a close bond. So, right after the part where he said no, Atien comes <coughs> back, and he's asking, like, why, why do you, why do you, like, the white man, why do they own land? Land is like air. Everybody owns it. It's for them to share. Look, I think with the Indians and the sparseness of the people in, like, the middle of the land, I think it was, I think it worked. But I think that with civilization, you have mm-hmm. to have some sort of, like, you know, organization. And I think that it works better like that. Definitely wouldn't work in Texas, though, if you tried to just walk on someone else's property. It's protected by the Second Amendment. Pew, 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 pew. Tanner, is, he has one of those signs, doesn't he? We have a sign that says uh, protected by the Second Amendment. No, Tanner's, Tanner's sign is a guy with a bunch of bullets through his body, and it says nothing in here is worth dying for. Then it says protected by the Second Amendment, doesn't it? There's a sign right there. Anyway. Isaiah has the Second Amendment one. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay, last question. So, for those of us um, who said, yeah, 
we would stay and not go with the Indians, how satisfying would it be to see your family finally? You, you would know you made the right decision. That would be awesome. It would be an answer to prayer. Yeah, it definitely be an answer to prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew, you'd obviously know you made the right decision, but how would make you feel like inside, you know? You'd, you'd feel proud of yourself for making the right decision and happy that your family was back. Exactly. And you'd been like the most rewarding decision of my entire life was to stay here instead of go. Yep. Alrighty, that about wraps it up. We still gotta do some donor shout outs. Isaiah, actually, Matthew, what would somebody want to do if they wanted a donor shout out? Um, they would have to go to patreon.com forward slash booking it, donate to any of our four levels. Exactly, and if you know us personally, I guess you can use PayPal us, whatever. <laughs> Isaiah, who is our newest donor? So, our newest donors are uh, my grandparents. Uh, thank you for donating. And Matthew, who is one of our oldest donors? Uh, Lizzie is still donating to us, so thanks again, Lizzie. Appreciate you, too. And then, of course, the legendary donor, the original donor. Thank you, Pimp Pappy. We're very, very grateful to you guys for donating. Make sure you guys go to patreon.com forward slash booking it. Donate to us. We posted the book list on there. You can see the entire book list for the semester, so you can read along with us. And if you can't donate for whatever reason, Please make sure that you rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Yeah, make sure we'll have next week is Call of the Wild. So make sure you read that, read along with us. And Matthew, hit us with a goodbye. This podcast is for you.